Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm so excited. We're getting ready for Halloween and we're creating a bunch of like really cool scary images for Halloween. And today's episode is going to be amazing because we're combining a bunch of different really cool images together. You're going to see how easy it is just to use basically blending modes to get all these images to get combined together in a really cool way. We're going to wind up making like a really cool album cover out of <laughs> basically five different stock photos. So let's go ahead and get into today's episode. You're going to love it. All right, so here we have all of our images ready to go. Now, before I started this episode, I spent about two hours looking online and making sure I got the best images for this episode. So whenever you're gonna be creating a piece of art, just remember, you wanna start with the best ingredients possible. And uh, we went to Photolia.com to get our images, and then these images up here, these are actually from the Flurn texture pack. So use great stock image websites and get great stock that's going to help you actually make great images. All right. I know that sounded like a super duper plug, but that's just the truth. <laughs> All right. So first step is just to get everything together onto the same document. So this is our background here. What we're going to do is hold the shift key and use my move tool and just click and drag from one image to another one. So we've got everything coming into the same document. There we go. Now let's go ahead and close these other documents down. So I'm going to hit Command W and close all those down. This is all we need. Let's hit F to full screen this and we're ready to start working. So really quick, I'm just going to keep things organized. So these are our textures. I'm going to shift click the two of those, hit Command G to group those. We're just going to call this textures. All right, let's go ahead and make that invisible. I'm going to group this with itself. We're going to call this snake. <laughs> this image is going to be so awesome. All right, we're going to group this with itself and I'm going to call this skull. There we go. And here we have our background image. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click our background image and that just makes it into a new, into a regular layer. And I'm just going to call this subject. There we go. Let's group this with itself and just call it subject as well. Okay, cool. So we're ready to go. We've really got a nice set of organization going on. Now our first step is to figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to use blending modes to get these things to blend together. So we're going to start with a skull. I'm going to go ahead and make that visible. And you're going to see there are a lot of different colors going on in this image. This is like a little bit of a greenish color and we have a little bit more of a yellow color here. So I'm just going to desat desaturate this skull. Shift Command U is going to take all the color out of the skull. Next I'm going to change the blending mode. We're going to go from normal down here to screen. And what screen does is it makes all of the black areas in an image completely go away. So you're only left with the lighter areas of a photo. It's a super easy way to blend two images together. Now let's go ahead and size this image correctly. So I'm going to hit Command T. Let's just bring this down in height just a little bit. And this kind of one of those cases where the skull that I have is obviously not this dude's skull, right? Like this is a skull that I found online. It's some other person's skull. But we're going to try to make it fit. So what I want to do is I'm actually going to click on this layer. We're going to go to Filter. And I'm going to go down to Liquify. OK, now here I can't really see what I'm doing unless I click on the Show Backdrop. And here in my where it says Use, I'm going to just say Subject. So I'm just going to use, there we go, that's the group. I'm going to use the Subject layer. And now I'm able to use my Forward Warp tool and really just kind of like start to push and pull this actual skull so it starts to represent what's going on in my image. So I'm going to work on lining up the mouth and the chin because, you know, you can't have someone else's skull in your in your skull. It's, you want it to look real. All right, let's bring out the nose and this area in the front. And there we go. Bring down this area a little bit as well. And then I'm going to pull the spine down and back a little bit. All right. And this is just going to help it actually look like, you know, it's fitting inside of that head. All right, let's hit OK. Here's the before and the after. Now, I did that pretty quick, but <laughs> we're going to see it's going to look all right. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, let's go ahead and fade away some of this skull. I'm going to put a layer mask on this layer and then use my brush tool and then paint black right here on the base of the skull. There we go. We really don't need any of this to be visible. All right, so now that we're talking about fades, actually above my subject group, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and then we're going to use our gradient tool. So G for the gradient tool. And I'm going to use my linear gradient. We're going to choose our foreground to transparent gradient. And I'm just going to paint with black. So it's going to basically go black to transparent. All right. And this is basically what I have. If everything's invisible, sorry, if, if everything else is invisible, there we go. This is basically just what I've created. It's a black gradient. But because it's already on this black image, there we go. You can see it just kind of fades away the rest of the subject. 
So we've got our skull in place and we're using a screen blending mode to make sure all the blacks disappear. Now I'm gonna enhance this a little bit using levels adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustments. I'm gonna go over here to levels and I'm gonna hit option command G, which is gonna clip this levels adjustment layer to the skull. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the darks a little bit darker. There we go. And we're gonna make the lights a little bit lighter. And this is just gonna help add some more contrast to that skull. There we go. So you can see without and with this layer on. Very cool. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna wind up bringing in a snake, but I wanna bring in some color into this image because it's kind of boring right now. So above our textures group, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna hit Command G to group that with itself and we're just gonna call this color. Okay, now inside of here, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go down to what's called a gradient map. So gradient map is a really cool feature. Basically it allows you to choose your dark point and your light point and it'll color your entire image. So we're gonna click on this gradient map and I'm gonna choose, instead of, right now it's going from black to white. I'm gonna choose like a really deep, dark purple. All right, there we go. That's really cool. And I can change this at any time. And then for my light point, we're gonna just find somewhere right around, there we go. Like a really nice light desaturated yellowish orange, somewhere right around here. Okay, very cool. So now I don't really have to worry so much about you know, any of the colors that are in my image because this is actually gonna color everything. And if you wanna change this at any time, just double click on it and you can totally change any of these colors at any point in time, which I will probably wind up doing. Okay, so that's a really good start to our image. Now the next thing we're gonna do is bring in the snake texture to the image and we're gonna use blending modes in a really similar way. So let's go ahead and turn on our snake group and you can see our snake is already colored by our gradient. So I don't have to worry about the color here with the snake. Now, if I were to change this layer blend mode from normal down to screen, we would see the snake is a little bit lighter. And this doesn't really fit anywhere in the image. I want to make it look like it's actually coming into the skull, which don't ask me why I want to do that, but I want to do that. If I change this layer blend mode from normal to multiply, we're just going to see the dark area and I'm going to get the inverse of what I want. So what do we do? Well, let's just change this back to normal. I'm actually going to invert this layer. So hit command I, because I want the snake skeleton to be dark and I want everything else to be invisible. So by inverting the actual image, now that's what we have. We have the snake skeleton is dark and now we're gonna change this from normal to multiply. And there we go. We have a dark snake skeleton, a dark snake skeleton instead, and we don't have a visible backdrop. So let's go ahead and get this sized and uh, placed inside of our subject. All right, let's go ahead and we're gonna flip this horizontally. There we go. And we're gonna make it look like it's kind of coming out of his nasal passage right there. I just thought this would be like a really cool image for like a you know rock band or something like that. Um, I always wanted to be in a band called Snake Skull. That's, that's really where it comes from. There we go. Really cool. Let's go ahead and place a layer mask on that and we're gonna use a black brush right here to just kind of fade that in. All right, let's rotate that a little bit more. And I really wanted it to look like the snakes, you know, like the skeleton actually just fades right into the rest of the, uh, into the rest of the skull. So we're gonna use the layer mask right here because there was a little bit of an edge. There we go. And I think that looks really, really cool. So now it's time to make this image look a little bit more grungy, give it a little bit more texture. And we're gonna use some of the paper textures that are available on flurn.com as a download. You can click on your screen to get to those. So let's go ahead and open these textures up and see what we're gonna be doing with these. We've got two different textures here. Now, these are basically just pieces of paper that we, you know, like distressed quite a bit and they make great, they make great textures for these types of images. So I want these like little lines and things like that to show up as lighter areas. So what we're gonna do is invert both of these textures. So hit Command I on both of these to invert them. Then each of these is going to be changed from a normal layer down to a screen blending mode but you can see there's far too much visible. You can see all the like mid-tones and stuff like that. I want the darks to go away and I want just the highlights to be there. So I'm gonna hit Command L on each one of these layers, which is brings up my levels. And basically I just bring my darks quite a bit darker, which should make, there we go, our blacks just completely disappear when I get to the right place. There we go. So now our blacks are completely gone. There we go, meaning you can only see the highlights. Let's do the same thing with here. So basically just bring your black point right up until there and you should only be able to see highlights. Okay, cool. Now we can lower the textures down on this. I don't need all this stuff to be super visible. Um, 
I just wanted a little bit like, you know, to make it look like it's distressed, a little bit more of like a kind of a, a grunge feel to it. All right, and you can even duplicate these layers. I'm gonna just flip that around. All right, and we're gonna put a, a, a layer mask on there just to paint black over some of these areas where we don't want those to be visible. All right, and then here on the actual group, let's go ahead and put a layer mask on the group. And then I'm gonna paint black over top of our subject here because I don't want any of this grit to be visible where our subject is, just on the background. And that'll help separate our subject out a little bit better from the background. So far this image is looking really cool and it took almost no time to do. Let's go ahead and give it a crop and then we need to put some text on the image to finish it off. So let's grab our crop tool. We're gonna hit C for the crop tool and basically I'm just gonna click and drag a nice crop that's gonna try to center our subject decently well. There we go, something like that. You know what, let's bring that down. There we go, that looks pretty good. You can always change this crop, by the way. I recommend having this delete crop pixels unchecked. So that way, at any point in time, you can make your crop larger and you wouldn't have lost that information. Okay, so there's our crop looking a little bit more like an album cover, which is exactly what we want. And here we're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna group this with itself and we're just gonna call this title. All right, now in here, I already figured out exactly what I want. So we're gonna hit T for the type tool. I'm gonna click right over here and we're gonna type in snake, if I can smell, a spell, <laughs> snake skull, cause it's totally badass. All right, and then we're, let's see, let's go ahead and pick a good font here. So we're gonna double click and I'm gonna go up to window and then down to character. All right, and for this, I'm gonna choose this tungsten compressed extra light because I really want a light font that doesn't have like a, a real big weight to the letters and that's gonna help draw a lot more attention to my actual subject. There we go and let's bring that in and hit that checkbox up there. Cool, now you might notice, you might not have noticed, but the color here that I've actually chosen is white but it's still being colored by this color adjustment layer. You can see how like kind of wonky this image looks right now, it's just, you know, everything's kind of like a totally different color. So having this color adjustment layer on the top of everything, the gradient map, it really brings everything to the same color, even the, even the snake skull type that I'm using, it's not white, it's a variation of this yellow that we actually see on the entire image. And that's how we create a badass portrait using blending modes in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final image. Thanks so much for watching this episode, guys. I hope you learned how you can use blending modes to create some really cool images. Just remember the key points. If an image is the opposite of what you want, don't be afraid to invert it. And that gradient map over everything else helps to color things and make your compositing much, much easier. If you have an idea for an episode or a comment about today's episode, just leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like what we're doing here at Flurn, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's easy. Just click on your screen right now. I'll make, it, I'll make it easy on you. Just click there and you can get free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. Thanks so much guys and I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone. I am the king of the fog. I am the king of the fog. I should get the fog machine and put it in my face. Totally gonna do that. I am the king of the fog. I am the king of the fog. <coughs> <coughs>